In the last video, you saw how to register and configure the Azure AD app uh, that was used to implement the single sign-on on a Microsoft Teams app. Okay, now that our Microsoft Teams um, Azure AD app has been created, it's now time for us to go ahead and to create um, the actual Teams app. Now I'm gonna do that from the command line. So I'm gonna go to where I wanna work on my project. I'm gonna create a new folder for our project and then go into that folder after we create it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and launch the uh, Yeoman generator for Microsoft Teams. It's gonna ask me a series of questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept some of the defaults and choose a couple of the different options. Um, we'll go ahead and call this our MS Graph Playground project. Uh, Contoso is fine, version 1.8, quick scaffolding, all of that's good. Uh, and then we're also gonna, we also wanna add a tab to our project. The URL doesn't matter, we can change that later. This is where the ultim where ultimately the application is gonna be hosted. Uh, where do, do we wanna show a loading indicator? I'll just choose the default there. Uh, our tab name, we'll call it the MS Graph Teamwork tab. It'll be a configurable tab that can go in a team. And then do we want to require Azure AD sign-on support uh, for the tab? I'll go ahead and say yes, and it's gonna prompt me for the ID of the Azure AD app. Well, that's the same ID that we created earlier. So I'm gonna grab that ID and then I'll paste that in. And then now I need to specify the application ID URI that we had earlier. So that was at API and then the ingrok URL with the GUID of our application at the very end. Microsoft Teams is, or the Yeoman Generator is now, for Microsoft Teams is now going to scaffold up our project, add all the files that are needed, and then run NPM install to go ahead and install everything. Um, the last thing that I wanna do before I go too far into this is I wanna go ahead and make one more change to our application now that we've created it. Uh, and this is just to make sure that um, I don't lose our password that we already created. So let's go ahead and open our project up in, micro, in uh, Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna go to the environment, uh, the .env file. And if I scroll down to the bottom, what you're gonna see are two properties that have already been added. One is for the app ID and one is for the app URI. And you recognize those from what we added in during our uh, scaffolding process. I'm gonna add, create another property here. And this additional property is going to be for the secret for our application. And I'm gonna grab that and stick that over here. And you'll see where that's gonna be used in a little bit later. Okay, so I don't need to have this old, this other uh, VS Code uh, instance open. Go ahead and close that because now we have everything inside of our project. So we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and build and test our application and get it running inside of Microsoft Teams just to see everything works. So I'm gonna do that by running gulp ingrok serve. And I can already see one little thing that we wanna change. Notice here that the, we have that subdomain, that dynamic subdomain I was talking about earlier. Um, because I have the, the uh, licensed version of ingrok, I can specify the name that I wanna use for the subdomain so that when I run the gulp ingrok serve, it will pick up that subdomain as you can see here so that my URL is not gonna keep changing on me every single time. Now that our app is up and running, let's go ahead and launch Edge and let's go log into Microsoft Teams. With our app running inside of Teams, I'm gonna come over here and install our app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the plus on the general channel and I'm going to select manage apps because I know that our app is not already installed. I'm then gonna come over here into the uh, apps page. I'm gonna upload a custom app into our team. I'm gonna go find the app that we just packaged up and go ahead and add it. And that's gonna go ahead and install it into our team and then add our channel for us. And now when I go in to go install the app, I can select the app. When I come back over here to our general channel, and then if I go to add our channel, you can see now my MS Graph Playground is now listed. It gives us the configuration page for the tab, but we don't really, are, we're not gonna use the configuration setting. So I'm just gonna leave that as just put something in here, just so I'll say something. And now we can actually see that our application is running. And what you'll notice here is by default, uh, it's already recognized using the single sign-on uh, capability inside of Microsoft Teams and in our project, uh, it's already fetched who the current user is by obtaining an ID token from Azure AD. And then Microsoft Teams 
took the ID token that it got and handed it back to our tab, and our tab was able to render out uh, the, uh, the user's name. And let's take a look at the code and see how this is set up. So if we take a look, go into the source folder, I'm gonna look for our tab. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger to see things a little bit easier. So the tab is implemented using a React project or a React uh, a web framework, and it's using the uh, React hooks. So what you'll see here is that in this first hook, this hook is gonna run when the component loads. So if the page is loaded in Microsoft Teams, as it is within a tab, it calls this method get auth token uh, on the JavaScript SDK uh, for Microsoft Teams. When this is successful, it's gonna extract the ID token, as you can see here, from that, that Microsoft Teams received from Azure AD, uh, and it's gonna provide it to the tab to retrieve, as you can see here, we're setting it, uh, we're setting the name of the actual, um, uh, of the user as a property uh, or on the current state of the application. And then I notify Microsoft Teams of success. Changing the state as I'm doing with this set name is gonna trigger React to re-render the component. And the code in the return statement, as I, if I take a look at that, the code in the return statement uh, within this React component is going to render the updated uh, user experience that includes the user's name from the React state property, as you can see here. So at this point, the tab is successfully using the Microsoft Teams support for single sign-on. However, it's limited to just using an ID token. Microsoft Teams can't retrieve a uh, access token to call Microsoft Graph directly. We're going to have to use uh, another process for that to work.